peace, we don't mean some sort of generic peace. We mean that you be in safety from this moment in your life till the next life. That you're always in a state of peace and joy and happiness. <clears throat> Let me uh, start by, uh, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, uh, who created the heavens and the earth and gave us guides like Abraham and Moses and Jesus, and for us Muslims also, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. And when usually we take the name of the prophets like for us Jesus and David and Solomon and Abraham and Moses, you will find many times when Muslims are talking, they will say peace be upon them, because we also pray for those people that have guided us. Um, having said that, my topic today is beauty. And how does beauty and spirituality interconnect? So, I want to uh, leave some reflections for all of you and share a few things that I think hopefully you will um, um, find interesting at least. Um, only human beings decorate their food before eating it. <laughs> Why? Does it taste better? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we will take the most simple food and sometimes decorate it. No animal does this, except for human beings. Human beings are relentless in their pursuit for beauty. We try to find beauty in everything. We try to find meaningfulness and perfection in everything that we do. Why? And what is beauty? This is also a very tough question. It's just as perplexing as to ask, what is love? There's no one simple answer, even though, of course, I will offer one. <laughs> I'd like to start by sharing with you, from an Islamic perspective as a Muslim, how Muslim children grow up. One of the first experiences that Muslims have of beauty. You know, there are three things that human beings experience as beauty. Now, I haven't given a definition yet, but I'll get to that. What is beautiful character? Everybody can recognize the beauty of someone's character when they're being extra nice to you, or they go the extra mile for you, or they do a certain service for you that you didn't expect them to do. And the second is beauty in terms of what we see somebody physically, an object that's beautiful. It could be a flower, it could be the sun, it could be the moon. And we recognize a certain perception that we call beauty. And the third is a beautiful voice. And we uh, recognize a beautiful voice and we say, wow, that's very beautiful. One of the things that Muslim children grow up with is hearing and listening to the voice of a beautiful voice. And uh, it, is the, it is, you can say, musical therapy that the Qur'an offers because beauty is therapeutic, right? Looking at nature is therapeutic. Listening to something beautiful is therapeutic. Seeing something beautiful is a healing for human beings. And so, you know, this should tell us that to be in, and, and, and so just stay with me for a second. I'd like to share with you the musical therapy that Muslim children grow up with. And hopefully this will give you an appreciation for how much Muslims appreciate uh, the concept of beauty. And then after maybe a few minutes of listening to this beautiful mel melodious voice, uh, which really is very therapeutic, as you will see, and I think afterwards you may attest to that, uh, then I will talk a few more words about how we can all benefit from the beauty that's out there, and what is beauty. So let me start by going to YouTube. <laughs> So this is one of the three forms of beauty. So everyone can just close their eyes. 
for like a minute and let the vibes or the energy sink in. Everything in the heavens and the earth is glorifying God in two ways. One is possibly everything in the heavens and the earth by its vibes, by its energy, the sun and the moon and the stars, they are praising God. But the other way is that, you know, if somebody makes a chair, a beautiful chair, that chair speaks to the mastery of the person who made that chair. And so this universe speaks to the beauty of God. It speaks to the perfection of God. 
And what's interesting is in the Arabic language, the, one of the words for beauty, there are many words in the Arabic language for beauty, but one of the most common words for the word beauty is ihsan. You know, ahsinat that that. But the word ihsan also means perfection. So something is beautiful when it is perfected. And so one of the aspects of beauty is, is that when things come in a way, like let's say, take any, anything, uh, when things are not symmetrical, then we don't find it beautiful as human beings. We find symmetrical things to be beautiful. So when things are organically integrated, if you follow what I'm trying to say, if th when things are integrated in an organic whole, whenever all the pieces come together in just the right way, then we say that's beautiful. And you know what's interesting is, of course, beauty is subjective. They say that, and it's very correctly, we say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think that was in one of your songs, the first song. But also about beauty, then referring to that particular part is, who are we trying to look beautiful to as humans? Are we trying to look beautiful to other human beings? Are we trying to show off? Are we trying to prove ourselves to ourselves? Sometimes that's a difficult situation too. Are we, what, because when we say uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, that means that you're trying to, imp it depends upon who you're trying to show your beauty to. How do we show our beauty to God? How do we be beautiful before God? The first way and probably the most important way to be beautiful before God is to purify our intentions. Because God doesn't look at our outer selves, right? This comes in the Bible, as well as it is a saying of the Prophet, God does not look at your outward form, but he looks at your hearts, the state of your heart, the purity of your heart. So, human beings and spiritual people that are on a spiritual journey like yourselves have to ask yourself, who are you trying to look beautiful to? Who are you trying to be perfect for? Are you trying to be perfect before God? Or are you trying to be perfect before other, His creation, basically, other human beings or others? If you make your intention and you want to be one with the universe, so to say, and you want to be in harmony with the universe, then since the whole universe is singing the praises of God, and they are perfect, the creation of God. See, the problem is not in heaven. The problem is on earth, right? Suffering is on earth. The heavens is perfect. And this is why Jesus used to say what? In the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Because the heavens is perfect. Every angel in the heavens has its face directed towards the pleasure of God. And whenever an angel looks at the creation of God, he thinks of nothing but, but God. How many times we look at something beautiful and we don't even think of God? So it is important that we take journeys out into the world of God, into the earth of God, into nature, look at the trees, look at the leaves, and ask ourselves, does this remind us of God? You know, I was talking about this yesterday, but I'll share with you today, is that there are people, they can tell you how far the sun is from us. They can tell you the temperature of the sun. They can tell you the distance of the moon from us and the distance of the stars from us. But it does not remind them of God. And there are other people, they may not tell you what it takes for a rocket to reach the moon, or how what's the temperature of the sun, but when they look at the universe, they feel like they're looking at, literally like they're looking at the work of God. Where do we stand? We have to immerse ourselves in the beauty of God and the nature out there. And, and, and absorb in ourselves the idea of God and the beauty of God.
So those vibes come into us, that energy comes into us. The energy in nature comes into us. Because nature knows God. And so, uh, I think I'll leave you with that. Um, let me end with a quote of Jesus, peace be upon him. Jesus said, uh, He said what? Uh, he said, Jesus, peace be upon him, said that love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your body. That's perfection. That is beauty. When beauty is when everything comes, when everything, when your body, mind, and soul come together as one integrated whole with one intention for one purpose, then you become a beautiful person. And that's what Jesus had. Jesus was, you know, his heart, his mind, his struggle, his day, his night, his prayers, they're all directed towards what? All directed towards the pleasure of God. He says, I do the will of my, my Father. That was his only, his first and last concern. First and last concern. And so, he showed people miracles. Why? So that they will turn towards God. So they will pray to the Father. And so, we have to do the same. We have to Clarify our intentions. Who know we have to know who we're trying to make ourselves beautiful to, and we have to immerse ourselves in the beauty of God, in the in the in the in the nature, and try to attain some of that vibe and some of that energy. So I'll end with that. Thank you very much, and I pray that God uh, enlightens our heart with the uh, with the vibes that are out there in. Everything in the heavens and the earth, the way it is, praising Him and appreciating God. That we also have a heart that praises God, <coughs> acknowledges God, thanks God, has gratitude towards God. And when we see nature, we immediately and spontaneously recognize God. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah, Khairan, Assalamu Alaikum, Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.